Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating a 3D to AI workflow that's going to allow you to create animations in whatever style that you want. And the programs I'm going to be using are Stable Diffusion, Blender, Cascador, and Mixamo. I'm going to be sharing multiple workflows using Comfy UI and Automatic 11.11 in this video, so pick whatever one that you're most comfortable with depending on the AI animations that you want to produce and whichever interface that you prefer to use. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. And first of all, here in Cascader, I'm going to be posing my character in two simple poses, as in I'm going to be mirroring the pose that I'm going to be produce right now. And as you see, if you're new to Cascader or if, you, or if you never used it before, this is a wonderful feature in Cascader, which is the auto pose. And I'm using the Unreal Engine 5 default mannequin in order to show you how easy it is to produce these animations using different characters and styles from simple 3D dolls without any determining features. So I'm going to be inputting the animation that I'm going to produce right here in Cascader. And by the way, in case you're really unfamiliar with it, you press F to insert a keyframe. And here I've just mirrored the pose. And I'm going to mirror it back again. And basically, that's my animation. Just he's going to be jumping from one side to the other, as in like a 3D fighting game. Like an idle pose on a fighter game. In case you're wondering how I'm going to produce the jump, first I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna interpolate between these frames. And that's it. I press the interpolation button after I selected all of my keyframes. And I want to make the jump have more impact, so I'm gonna be doing some adjustments down in the keyframe. All I did was I just duplicated uh, the middle and the first keyframe. That was it. Then I'm going to press the auto physics button, and this is where the magic happens. And from these simple keyframes, I was able to produce a fairly detailed animation in less than five minutes. Now to add on some secondary features, I'm gonna be cleaning up this animation just a little bit before I snap this physics generated animation, auto physics, to my main mannequin and render, and render out the video to take it to my AI interface. And after some tinkering with the secondary motions tab, I believe this is a fairly good animation that I could export into Comfy UI and produce a 3D animation from. Sorry, I mean an AI animation from. And this is actually all that I need. I'm just going to export this video and I'm going to feed it into my Comfy UI workflow, which I'm going to be discussing with you in just a minute. And now in Comfy UI, I'm going to be using Stable Diffusion 1.5, Control Net 1.1.5, and Animate Diffusion to produce a consistent animation. Here's the video that I'm going to use, and I've already inputted it right here. And here is the Animate Diffusion model that I'm going to be using. So feel free to copy this workflow. And if you're confused, I can share the JSON file. Let me know in the comments if you want the JSON file for it. ControlNet is going to be able to copy my fighter's poses and track the animation properly in order to produce a 2D-ish style animation. In here, all you're going to do is just input the positive prompt. And here is my ControlNet channel. All I'm going to be using is the open pose control net model, and I'm going to be using the line art control model, but I'm going to lower the effect of my line art control model as the open pose is enough for it, and I don't want it to take the outer shape of Manny the mannequin from UE5. Also, by the way, you can use an IP adapter as I'm going to be showing you and in, uh, in uh, automatic 1111, and you can expect some really good results from the IP adapter. However, I don't find it to be needed here, actually. I just wanted to make a random 
fighter character as I don't really have a Laura that um, or a character Laura that I'm really into I just input it a random Laura just to show you how you can turn these poses that I've made within Cascader like these series of images into first some control knit channel images that are going to be fit into stable diffusion then are going to be stylized and without having the need to use any program such as EB synth or any other program that you need to maintain the stylization that you made in the video and I really like how the control knit is coming out anyway so to summarize my workflow basically I've inputted a video then I used uh, anime diffusion model uh, in stable diffusion 1.5 I'm also gonna be sharing the models that I used in my description down below and here don't mind me I'm just checking out how cool the control knit outcome is so back to what I was saying I used an anime diffusion model with the uh, stable diffusion 1.5 uh, then I used a LoRa then I used a positive prompt I hooked up that node to my control knit channels which I took from my video press generate and here is the outcome quite consistent if I may say so and if I was able to insert some nodes in order to remove the background here of my video um, I can easily use this in like a video game as a PNG sequence and again here is my complete workflow that I explained if you want to use it I'm gonna be using some different models in order to see how my generation is gonna come out but now to move on to the second method that I like to use in order to produce AI animations here you see I could turn this female and to another one which is Evangelia Lily if you guys know her she's the actress from Lost and in order to produce this flickery animation which in its own right is a form of artistic expression similar to the one that's used in the video for Linkin Park I'm going to be using this mannequin from Mixamo I'm going to be downloading this animation loop and I'm going to export it to Blender and make a really simple background like a backdrop because all I want basically is just the character movement information that I can use and control it here I'm just extruding the background of this plane shade smooth now I want to import my character and to set up the camera Control alt plus and set the view to the camera I guess this is a good spot to have my video of course I'm gonna make sure to center the video around my character and to have a good output like 512 by 512 just in case you want to use EB synth but I'm not going to be using it in this video because I actually want the jittery effect if you guys want to sh want me to show you how to use EB synth I'll be happy to do so and just make a green background just in case you want to change up things in the future I'm going to be telling you why you need the green background but for now just copy the settings that I'm going to use you need four control net channels in the first channel I'm going to be using open pose I'm going to be using the IP channel as well you can use instruct P2P I've had some really good results with those and I'm also going to be using a depth channel so to summarize control net and stable diffusion 1.5 because you know my I only have six GBs of VRAM anyway I'm gonna be using you can use line art or depth but I prefer depth in the chest in this case it does the job and it's quicker and once you have your control net channel set up you're going to be using the batch of images that you rendered out from blender as your input and I'm going to be using this image as the instruct uh, IP sorry the IP because I want the 3d style 
And finally, I'm going to be using a snake Laura, which also I'm going to be putting within my description. I just downloaded the snake Laura from Cyber AI to show you how easy it is to animate a female character, like to use a maximal female doll and turn it into solid snake in his CQC pose. And it's usually better to have your Laura in the beginning of the prompt. And as always, I'm going to engineer a simple prompt of Snake in his tactical gear. I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to be inputting the subject, uh, the form of media that I want him to be in, like a 3D animation. I'm not going to be saying what pose he's going to be in because that's the job of control net. And I'm going to be putting some negative prompts such as bad animation, bad, uh, sorry, bad anatomy, bad face, etc. I'm going to be using high res fix as well so that uh, my output doesn't come out as muddy. And to resummarize, I used four control net channels. I used a batch input from the directory in which I rendered out the animation and blender. And I had the weight of the control net pose to be 1.5 for the open pose. As for the IP adapter and instruct P2P, I had them on 0 0.5. You can skip using the P2P if you don't want it to. Then I took a seed from a generation that I liked the most and had that seed throughout my entire animation to have some sort of consistency so that you don't have a different picture for each generation. After all of that is done, and I've pressed the generate button, and came back after a while, here's the result that I expect to have. I hope that you found this video useful, please leave a like if you do, thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.